there's a phrase here which is theta retast which means this will be fine i think it's somehow in our heritage there's a certain amount of fearlessness and foolishness and just like you know what what's the worst thing that's going to happen is anybody going to die no eh let's do it i think big ideas are are a good thing to do every once in a while just go for it do crazy stuff We've sampled pretty much anything you could sample in a traditional Western orchestra. What do we do after that's done? A lot of the instruments that we were recording, we hadn't seen them or knew very well how they worked. With a lot of these quirky and interesting instruments, you kind of just come in with a plan and then throw it out the window and <laughs> adapt. How do you approach something from a different culture and try making it authentic? started to figure out what were we going to record and all of that you need to learn a little bit of their history like when was their independence what wars have they had inside what religions do they follow what's the traditional music from these places sound like one of the first things that i found is they were very nomadic traditions and big instruments like you know pianos or harps or stuff like that were not a thing Iceland is a bit more primitive when it comes to folk music. The first settlers came here in the 800s for about a thousand years. This was a rough place. The weather sucked, it was cold and wet. We didn't have a lot of things to work with. If we compare our folk music to say Brazil, all these amazing rhythms and syncopations we don't even have a fraction of that everything here is just cold and raw there are all of these incredible instruments that are like ridiculously old and crunchy and dusty and gritty and there's musicians in Los Angeles that play a lot of these uh, instruments and it's like well why don't you just record it all in Los Angeles but there's something about an authentic musician playing the instrument that they kind of grew up with and capturing that sound. I don't think you're going to get that on Sunset Boulevard. If you compare to like where we are just south of the Arctic Circle in a volcanic island with not that many people, there is a surprising amount of really good studios here. My friend Vegar hooked us up with Sirland Studio in Reykjavik, Iceland. It's a pretty nice sized scoring stage. When I walk in the studio, one of the first things that I see is a New York poster. <laughs> I immediately took a po uh, photo of it. <laughs> we kind of had an idea of the things that we wanted to sample. It was a combination of deciding what we wanted to do and then connecting with the musicians and finding out what they were going to bring. It was definitely a learning experience for all of us, I, I imagine. We love to have a good variety of these sticky and flaky things. We all had to dive into learning, you know, what branches of music make the music from this country and what instruments do we hear. And why are those instruments present and important? We had certain ideas of what this Icelandic sound is to us. And when we got there, we really had to throw a lot of that out the window the moment these musicians started playing these unique and crazy instruments. Normally, the process of recording a sample library starts at conceptualizing. We think about what's the sound that we want. We want it to be a bright instrument, an aggressive instrument, a mellow instrument. And then step two is breaking it into pieces, right? With orchestral instruments, it's pretty straightforward. You can just look up an orchestration book, figure out what the, the ranges of the instruments are, what are the types of articulations you could do. How do we record it? Whole tone or minor thirds? Do we want to get long notes? Do we want to get short notes? Do you pluck the strings? Is it something you hit with a hammer? Do I want close mics, far away mics? Do I want to provide the users with individual mics or with mixes? And then you map it out and you go from there. We make a spreadsheet and then we go to the studio and we don't follow any of it because always things go wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the, I, mean, I don't know, I like the 
like well, it, no, it should yeah. it should slide. Some when you're sampling, it's yeah. it's long and arduous process. We rolling. Going through the entire instrument from the lowest notes to the highest notes, the short notes, the long notes. capture all of those things. Initially, the plan was to record what we normally record on these instruments, which is a set of sustains, a couple of shorts, maybe tenudos, legatos. But we immediately discovered that just because the way these instruments were built, it was not going to be possible to record legato. The Shetland Goo has gut strings, which ma makes them very hard to keep in tune. We started trying to do those things and it was just not delivering. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> the, the Tagle Harpa, for example, is a very interesting instrument and sampling it is a, quite a challenge because there's like a drone note that is always playing. And then there's the secondary note that plays on top. Do we sample the two of them together, or do we sample the drone alone with the individual pitches alone? And but we realized that actually you'd have to take it apart in order to get the bow in a certain angle in order to get them separate. So we're like, no, let's just, look, let's keep it simple. Let's just capture exactly what you would play. The performer told us like, this is not the way the instrument is played. Like, this is not how we play a, a Shetland Goo. We were trying to make the instrument fit on a mold that it was not made for. We could auto-tune it and make it make it play in perfect tune, but it's just not the way the instrument sounds. But we're like, who cares? That's the sound we wanted to get. It's definitely the sound you go for when you're looking for Icelandic strings, right? If you go and watch the movie The Northman, you will hear that exact same raw character. It's been, a, like for me, just a really cool learning experience. After the final session, we end the day, we go out into the parking lot, it's nighttime, we look up at the sky and what do you see? It's, uh, it's this beautiful image of the northern lights, it was just covering the entire sky. Walking out of the studio for the final time was definitely sad, but the northern lights made it a little easier. This is like this crazy poetic thing, you know? That was a good way to wrap it up. I think the Iceland and the women of the North Libraries are going to stand out because they have a different sound. I would hope that someone that plays one of these instruments would want to buy one of those instruments, would want to get a Shetland Goo or a Tagal Harpa and, you know, record it at home, learn how to play it and learn the value that this instrument has to offer for your sound palette. So I hope like the moment that you click that load button, press the first note on your keyboard, that it's an inspiring sound, that it's something that can start triggering other ideas. I hope what they can start using sparks something creative on their end, experimenting greatly and, you know, not being afraid of uh, making mistakes while doing it. So the famous phrase is theta retast, which means this will be fine.